I'm with Anne Lyles, ex-curator of the Tate Gallery London and world-renowned expert on John Constable, and we're going to examine a sea beach Brighton, a large oil sketch which has recently been returned to the accepted canon of works by John Constable. Annie, the subject of this picture, Brighton, is in itself quite telling if one's trying to date this painting. Absolutely. Uh, we know that Constable was in Brighton between 1824 and 1828 at various lodgings because his wife Mariah, her health was deteriorating quite badly by now. They'd already taken lodgings in Hampstead in the summers where the air was better uh, for this horrendous condition that, that obviously affected she her was breathing. Consumptive. Consumptive. It's a form of tuberculosis that, uh, of course, um, was called consumption. People like John Keats ended up dying of consumption, and it ran in her family. And by 1824, uh, really, her health was, was deteriorating, so the doctors advised sea air. And that meant th that they took lodgings in Brighton not only for the summer months, but they often stayed over there in the winter as well. Now, I can see with my naked eye that there's a vertical line what looks like pencil drawing on the surface of the canvas and underneath the paint layer. What's the significance of that? Now that is very interesting. In fact, it's very telling. And this is something, again, that we discovered when we're examining a lot of the pictures prior to this exhibition at the Tate in 2006, that the constable was very meticulous the way he worked when he was uh, creating larger compositions from smaller sketches. So we know that this was an enlargement from a smaller plein air sketch that presumably he made on the beach at Brighton, probably in about 1824 or 5. And that original smaller sketch is now in the Detroit Institute of Arts. Now this was painted at a time when his reputation in Paris was at its height. Um, there has been speculation, I think, that this may be even preparatory for a commissioned by Arrowsmith, his Paris dealer? Yes, there is a thought. Now, this is thanks to some very interesting research that's um, in preparation in train at the moment by Peter Harrop, who's working on an exhibition about Constable's time in Brighton, which is going to take place at the Brighton Museum in 2017. And this picture has actually been asked for that exhibition. Ah, well, and I think it would be marvellous if it could go to that exhibition because Peter's idea, and I think this is very interesting, very difficult to prove, but one can't always prove things generally when it comes to art historical conundrums, but he's suggested that because in two of the letters between John Arrowsmith, the Anglo-French dealer and constable, in which Arrowsmith discusses to Constable, oh, that sea beach that we've mentioned, the sea beach Brighton, you know, any chance of you getting that ready for me? So in effect, John Arrowsmith commissioned Constable to make a sea beach subject of Brighton. And this could be one of his first ideas for such a subject, but he never finished it. Could you suppose it's intended perhaps to be a companion piece to... To the chain pier. To the chain pier. Well, it is a thought. It is just a possibility because... The whole weight of the composition is on the right-hand side, it isn't is, it? It I is. I mean, they, they would balance. They would way, balance they? quite nicely. It, that is entirely possible. It, 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 it's, it's impossible to know for sure, but it is very interesting that we have the chain pier, which originally was seven foot, now six foot, very busy scene looking east, and this is the opposite mood looking west, and this sketch, indeed, is exactly the same size, type of handling, um, and no doubt date, as a, pre a preliminary intermediate sketch that was made for the chamber. So that is food for thought. John Constable was an emotional man, and his response to nature is very visible in his landscape painting. This picture, which is all about sky and a little bit the sea, has a tremendous sense of drama to my mind. There's this rolling wave coming towards the groin and the wind driving the clouds and the spume over these beached vessels. It's a very dramatic thing. It, it is indeed. I mean, you could, there are two elements to this, I suppose. Um, one is clearly Constable was interested in the sea and he, he loved what he called the wild music of the waves. So, 
and I think he loved the isolated stretches of beach. He'd often spent time with his great friend uh, John Fisher uh, near Weymouth uh, on, on isolated stretches of, of beach and they used to discuss that they loved this kind of open empty seashore. So I think um, Constable here is injecting the drama um, into the picture and of course at this time life I think was very difficult for him. His wife wasn't well, he was travelling a lot between, um, between London and Brighton and so on, and, and I think there is a sense of turbulence within his personality that, that's projected you here. You can certainly see it in the yes. way... you can, and this dramatic the sky... The dynamic of the sky works. That's right, and of course this is just two or three years, if we assume that it dates from the mid-twenties, after he'd been doing so many of his sky and cloud paintings, which He'd often um, investigating very fast-moving clouds scudding along very quickly in the direction of the wind. But I think we also need to bear in mind as well, as well as the biographical romantic element, that um, when he's working up from the Detroit sketch, he's thinking about how to make a more dramatic composition. So um, he, the wave is a little bit more turbulent and turning, crashing onto the uh, foreshore. But also, even the way he deploys the figures is a little bit more dra dramatic. In the preparatory sketch, there's a, a rather more upright figure who's just folding the sails. The whole but thing is rather stiffer, isn't it? It's much stiffer and more still, in a way. But here, there's more energy and drama. And the main figure seems to be holding maybe some basket of fish, but leaning backwards. Yes, you can see the weight of the figure counterbalancing That's the right, basket. straining on something. Um, and again, that gives it a bit more drama. And then, of course, this um, The very anchor. pronounced shadow. Cast. And the shadow. There must have been some quite bright light somewhere, despite the stormy sky, to create the shadow to, in, that the anchor casts. Right. Yes. And as Constable himself said, the sky is the chief organ of sentiment, and it yes. entirely dictates the way one feels about the landscape. The sky creates that emotion, doesn't it? It, it does indeed. And of course, unfortunately, we don't have, because as far as we know, Constable never painted it the subsequent picture that would have derived from this, in which the sky may be more dramatic still. This subject was mezzotinted by David Lucas in the early 1830s, and Constable put some rather interesting words to go with it that rather expressed the way he felt. Yes, that's absolutely right, Dave. He, uh, it was, as you say, engraved in 1830. Then Constable himself drafted a really interesting letterpress, and I think the um, the paragraphs, or two or three, that he wrote to accompany uh, the mezzotint of this subject are, are particularly telling and moving. He writes, Of all the works of the creation, none is so imposing as the ocean, nor does nature anywhere present a scene that is more exhilarating than a sea beach, or one so replete with interesting material to fill the canvas of the painter. The continual change and ever-varying aspect of its surface always suggesting the most impressive and agreeable sentiments. And then he talks about the wild music of the waves. I love that bit. Annie, thank you so much.